Welcome to Quality Management for Organizational Excellence. This is Chapter 11, and it's about effective communication. Effective communication is very important for each organization um, and for success in each organization. Every good leader at uh, organizations need to be, needs to be effective at communicating with uh, not only their subordinates, but also teammates, as well as uh, their um, their superiors. So tonight we're going to discuss about um, effective communication. We're going to define what communication is uh, from a scientific standpoint. We're going to understand what the role of communication and total quality is. Understand communication in this process. Recognize inhibitors of communication. We're going to talk about establishing a, a, a conducive communication client, communicating by listening, understanding nonverbal communi communication factors, communicating verbally and in writing, and providing negative or corrective feedback. So let's talk about what communication is. Communication is a transfer of a message that is both received and understood. Effective communication is a higher order of communication. It means that the message has been received, understood, and is being acted upon in the desired manner. Now, as you can see um, from the diagram below, that communication re re uh, depends on the message uh, being received and it being received correctly. So we as communicators have to deliver that message clearly and make sure that it is uh, clear in what we expect the outcome to be. Now, communication is the oil that keeps total quality engine running. Without it, total quality breaks down. Communication plays the role of facilitation in a total quality setting. And communication happens on very many different levels within an organization. For example, communication can exist within a business organization on a one-to-one -one level. You're having a conversation with somebody. It can also be at the team or unit level. If you manage a team or if you work with a team, communicating effectively between a group of individuals is very important. It can also happen at a company level. Communications such as company announcements and, and, and different uh, um, types of communications that go around the company to different uh, departments. This is an example of that. And finally, in an organization, it can happen at the community level. And this may be uh, a, a communication between um, a person in the organization and, and, and a stakeholder. For example, uh, between sales and a customer. Now, communications is a process that involves a message, sender, receiver, and medium. Message is what is being transmitted the information, motion, intent, or something else. And the sender is the originator of the message, and the receiver is the person who gets it. The medium is the vehicle used to transfer the message also referred to as platform. Now, various factors can inhibit communications. It's important to note what those are. The most common ways, uh, factors that can inhibit communication are differences in meaning. You say one thing, but somebody interprets it as meaning something else. A lack of trust with somebody. Information overload. Interference, meaning that, um, that something has disrupted the communication. Premature judgments or jumping to conclusions. Or the kill the messenger syndrome, meaning that you're taking a message being delivered by somebody else and taking it out on that person. These are all examples of um, things that could disrupt it. Some more are condescending tones inaccurate assumptions, or listening problems and not listening clearly. Now it's important to note some strategies that will help make um, a more conducive uh, climate for communication. Make sure that you communicate often and openly. 
Avoid the knowledge is power syndrome and communicate to empower people. We talked about empowering in employees last week, and it's important to understand that you want to um, you want to empower people, right? You want to condense the information to be communicated in a form that is easy for the recipient to absorb, understand, and remember. Avoid burying people with data rather than giving them information. Communicate with others who can benefit from the information in the question and avoid pe leaving people out of the loop. Encourage questions, comments, different perspectives, and opposing opinions. Encourage better ideas and take them seriously. Avoid one-way communication. Make sure that you listen absurdly and objectively. Avoid shooting the messenger when the news is being communicated or bad or unwelcome. And we'll talk about bad or unwelcome news. Some um, nonverbal communication is often, um, is often a, a hidden um, way to interpret message. A lot of people that are giving uh, a message or sending a message do not realize that they're often using nonverbal communication at the same time they are using verbal communication. And this could help distort the message. So some of the nonverbal body factors, posture, the way that you dress, your hand gestures, your facial expressions, and the poses that you take with your body. Some factors with your voice are volume, pitch, tone, and rate of speech. Proximity factors include your relative position to the person that you're delivering the message to, physical arrangements of where you're sitting or where you're standing, the color of the room or environment, and the fixtures uh, or furniture around you. Now some keys to uh, effective writing so we talked about verbal and nonverbal communication. When writing, uh, be brief. One of the biggest negative aspects of modern technology is the potential for information overload. Now make sure that written that you keep things brief and your and use as few words as possible. Explain your purpose, state your points, and tell the recipients what you want to do. In fact, uh, this example on the right is a good way to organize your thoughts. Be clear and concise and follow this 4x4 four four format. Also be direct. Directness is an extension of brevity. It means getting to the point without beating around the bush. Be accurate. Make sure that you avoid vague phrases and terms. Uh, and you specify dates, numbers, quantities, and so on. Make sure that you practice self-editing. I know we have spell check nowadays, but it's important that we also read uh, what we write. Even professional writers find it difficult to edit content and edit for grammar. Make sure that uh, you ask somebody to take a look at an important letter or important message and give their feedback. Finally, your homework assignment will be about giving uh, bad news, right? Negative situations. One of the worst things that you have to, would have to do as a manager is give corrective feedback. And when dealing with employees, managers must often give corrective feedback. So it's important to be effective that you communicate this feedback properly. So some of the following guidelines can be used. Make sure that you be positive. For feedback to be corrective, the employee must accept it and act on it. It's, they're more likely to do this if it's delivered in a positive can-do manner. Be prepared. Focus all this feedback specifically on the behavior. Don't get into personality traits and give specific examples of the behavior you want to see corrected. Also be realistic. Make sure the behaviors you want to be um, fixed are things that they have control over. And don't be completely negative. Find something positive to say. Give the employee necessary corrective feedback, but don't focus wholly on the negative. 
Now there's two approaches managers can use when giving corrective feedback. Talk, question, and listen. With this approach, the manager tells the employee about the behavior, asks for his input, and listens to that input. Then listen, question, and talk. With this approach, manager listens first. It may be yet necessary to ask an open-ended question, like how are things going, to get the ball rolling. When the employee starts talking, listen. The employee talks adequately about the area where corrective action is needed, reinforces or comments. Ask what they think they could do to improve. If the employee does not appear to be fully aware of the improvement, move to the first step, which is talk, question, listen. So those are some exact some examples of dealing with a negative situation as far as communicating com corrective feedback. Your homework assignment, I'll be asking you to prepare um, a situation where you're going to address a, neg a negative situation and prepare um, a message for somebody. So that's it with Chapter 11, and we'll talk again next week.